Hi, my name is Tony Kovach, and I'm the artist in residence here at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. This is the first lesson of the unit How to Play a 72 Bass Accordion, which will focus on folk styles such as Irish, Scottish, Cape Breton, and Scandinavian. At this point in the series, we assume you have a basic knowledge of major and minor keys, scales, and chords, as we will now shift our focus to specific techniques for playing in different genres. Each lesson will provide you with a serious repertoire piece that will require persistence and practice to master. We do, in fact, encourage you to watch each lesson several times, take notes, rewatch it, and you can even slow it down in YouTube. Today's goal is to learn the techniques involved with playing Irish music and apply this to our new piece, Tamlin. First, let's talk about some music theory. Today's song is in D minor, which looks like this. <laughs> Notice we only have one accidental, and that's B flat. Today's song only uses three different chords. D minor, which is D, F, and A. C major, which is C, E, and G. And B flat, which is B flat, D, and F. The chord progression of today's song will move down and up a whole step at a time. A common feature of Irish music is the rapid repetition of a pitch. This type of ornament is achieved by using multiple fingers to articulate on the same key, just like this. We're going to use two different fingerings to do this today, both of which we will practice beforehand. The first one is to play your second and third finger back and forth, just like this. Find your A, and you're going to go like this, two, three, two, three. In the song, you'll play that rapidly. The other method is to use your second finger and thumb to go back and forth rapidly. You're gonna start with your second finger like this. You're going to play D with your pinky, and then you're going to alternate with your second and third finger to play four rapid notes on the A. Let's do that four times in a row. For the second part of the exercise, we're going to shift our pinky down to the C, and then on the G, we're going to play two thumb, two thumb. Just like this. Let's put them together. All of this will come in handy during our song of the day, Tamlin. you need to know about left-hand accompaniments in Irish music is that you only play the bass note when you switch chords. That means if we're playing a D minor chord for two measures, it will sound like this. We omit the bass note. The left-hand accompaniment for the A section of Tamlin has some great examples of this. The song also highlights that when chords are a whole step apart, you're going to leap two rows at a time. The first line is two beats of D minor, two beats of C major, and then four beats of B flat. Notice I omitted the bass. After that, it's four beats of C major. Again, I omit the bass. Then two beats of B flat and two beats of C major. That's D minor, C, B flat, C, B flat, C. The second phrase starts the same way. And then it changes after the full measure of C major you're going to play one beat of B flat, a chunk, then you're going to play one beat of C, and then two beats of D minor. So the second phrase sounds like this, D minor, C, B flat, C, B flat, C, D minor. The whole A section sounds like this, D minor, C, B, C, B flat, C, D minor, C, B flat, C, B flat, C, D minor. Now that you know the chord progression, 
The right hand melody should come very easily, because most of what we're doing is playing arpeggios that highlight that progression. Remember I mentioned that playing repeated notes with different fingers is a common feature of Irish music? In fact, that's how we're going to start the song. We're going to play A with our thumb, and then we're going to play two Ds in a row, first with our second finger, then with our third finger, just like this. So the first line stays in this position and sounds like this. Notice we end on a B flat, that's going to set us up to play a B flat major arpeggio. After that, you're going to keep your hand in the same spot, and you're going to play a C major arpeggio. The fingering is going to be second finger on C, third finger on E, and fifth finger on G. And you're going to play this pattern. If you put those two arpeggios back to back, it sounds like this. The last part of the phrase is simply walking up and down a five finger scale, starting on B flat, just like this. So the whole first phrase sounds like this. The second phrase of the song is nearly identical until you get to the last measure. So repeat the first few measures of that first phrase. And this is where it changes. You're going to start with your fifth finger on F. Notice I go all the way down to the A, and then I play that D again using my second and third finger. That last measure sounds like this. After that, the entire section repeats. In the B section of the song, we tend to play one chord for a longer period of time. So this is a great opportunity to try out your real pattern. It's going to be two measures of D minor, two measures of C major, then two more measures of D minor, and then here the chords come more quickly. It's two beats of B flat, then two beats of C, and then one beat of B flat, one beat of C, and two beats of D minor, which is the same way the A section ended. Here's the progression for the B section. D minor. C. D minor. B flat. C. B flat C. D minor. This whole section is basically just a variation on the warm up I showed you. You're going to start with your pinky on D and you're going to repeat on A, just like this. After that, you play an arpeggio with your thumb, just like this F, A, D, A. That's going to look like this. After playing that twice, you're going to play the second part of our warm-up, C with your pinky, and then you're going to repeat with your thumb and index finger on G. So, so far we have this. And then the little turnaround that follows also highlights a C major chord. You're going to start with your fourth finger on C. That's going to be C, B, C, D, C, and then you go down the arpeggio, G, E, G. So the whole phrase sounds like this. After that, you're going to repeat the section that highlights D minor. Notice I ended that phrase by putting my third finger on C, which was a crossover. After that, I'm going to walk down to A, and then back up, put my thumb on C, and then I'm going to continue to walk up. So that phrase sounds like this. So the whole second phrase looks like this. Just like the A section, the B section also repeats. Join us next time as we discuss techniques for playing an Irish jig. Thanks for watching.